And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well, before we do get into today's video as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Guys, in today's video we've got a fair few bits and pieces to discuss, of course taking on Livingston uh, tomorrow in the Scottish Premiership, very very important game before we go into the international break. Um, as I said, we are going to be going through all the sort of latest Rangers news, that also includes the club agreeing a deal, so as I said we'll go through that. But let's go through first what Chris... Boyd has said, of course, Chris Boyd has came out stating that Celtic are a laughing stock, but Rangers gave pride within Europe. Um, so it's always good. He has a love-hate relationship with a lot of uh, people that watch Sky Sports. We, of course, love him at the Rangers side, but the Celtic fans absolutely hate them, uh, hate him. Um, but let's go through what he said in his uh, Scottish Sun column. He said Celtic like to class themselves as a Champions League club. Off the pitch, they have the stadium, the fan base, and the disco lights to operate at that level. The big problem is when the games start, they continue to be the laughing stock of the competition. When Rogers returned in the summer, his exact words is, we want to see if we can make an impact in Europe. Well, this team, his team have made an impact, a negative one. It's been a disaster of a campaign. Simply winning a game in the tournament for the first time in six years would be seen as progress now. Uh, while Boyd aimed huge criticism at Celtic in Europe so far, he did reserve praise for former club Rangers as well as Aberdeen. This is what he said with regards to our win in Group C in the Europa League on Thursday. He said at least the other two Scottish European teams gave us a bit of pride and coefficient points. Rangers fully deserved their win against Sparta Prague. Aberdeen are out of the Conference League, but they played well in Greece against Powell and deserve massive credit. Um, so there you go, Chris Boyd, of course, always fairly vocal. Uh, I don't think that's going to go down with the other side of the city. Uh, but yeah, it was right. It was an absolutely beautiful performance on Thursday against Sparta Prague. And as I said, I hope this form can continue going into our next game, of course, against Livingston. We are going to speak about Livingston. We are going to provide you a bit of team news uh, regards to Livingston a bit later on in the video. But let's discuss Rangers agreeing a deal. As I said, um, Rangers like, look like they've got really exciting young talents within the mix at the moment. I've spoke about McCall and I dedicated a video to him in the last uh, video that I did. Uh, really, really happy with his sort of impact. Another man that's made a debut, of course, um, this season as well, um, has just signed a long-term contract with the football club the club have announced. Uh, this is what they said on their website. Rangers, could, uh, Rangers Academy can today come and announce that John Lee Waferco has signed a contract extension with the club until May 2026. The 20-year-old made his first team debut for the Jersey in a 2-1 victory over Greenwich Morton in the Via Cup play. Uh, sorry, the Via Play Cup in August after featuring prominently across the preseason. He has also been a regular fixture in the B team in recent seasons, enjoying a variety of challenging matches, uh, encompassing fixtures both home and at a further afield. The Academy director Zeb Jacobs commented, uh, we are delighted that John Lee has extended his contract to Rangers. It is recognition of his development since joining the club and his recent experience with the first team is a testament to his hard work and dedication. A long road still awaits John Lee has. He looks to further improve as an individual and it is important that he continues to meet the challenges head on in his path to fulfilling his high potential. Um, I've been very, very vocal on our sort of pipeline of youth players to the first team. Of course, I've been uh, given a lot of praise to, to McCausland in, in general after his sort of cameo appearances. But that's where you want to try and aim to be. Start to try and get into the first team at around 20 years old. Um, obviously, as well as that, Lovelace is another one who's currently injured, but he looks really promising. And uh, Wolofeco looks really, really good as well. Um, and as, of course, the club giving him a long-term sort of contract extension until 2026 shows testament to that so we'll probably start to see him maybe emerge in the first team over the next sort of uh, few months which is really really exciting on that front so yeah good for him and massive congratulations to him as a player and as I said hopefully um, his progress continues and we can start to see him feature within the first team because that's all I really like to see I like to see the young players come up the ranks and, and, and really help us out in that sort of way one financially for the club it's also very good because they progress and we can sell them and um, it's free basically um, in terms of financial fair play you get a lot of uh, money back for that um, and then of course even just making an impact and making us better as a first team is also very very exciting as well so yeah good to see for that and congratulations to him um, and of course now let's turn our heads towards the game this weekend against Livingston we know what it's like synthetic park Livingston has, have actually struggled so far in the early parts of this season currently sitting 11th in the Scottish Premiership uh, not the best of form at the moment for David Martindale's men of course their last game was a 1-0 defeat to Dundee prior to that they lost 1-0 uh, to Hearts prior to that they 
lost 2 0 to Dundee. Prior to that, they lost 3 1 to Kilmarnock. Their last win coming against Motherwell, that was a 2 0 win at that stadium. Um, so, yeah, not in very, very good position at all. But we know how this, this place can be a tricky place. You know the pitch. Um, I hate these pitches, but I'm not going to moan about it. We know that we're going to be playing there at least, uh, usually at least four or five times a season, that being with Kilmarnock as well, that we're going to be playing on plastic. So there is no excuse for these plastic pitches anymore. Um, but we know what they're, they're going to do, and we need to carry on that fine form going into the international break. And then we've got two weeks to sort of just relax, reset, and hopefully get Clements further ideas pushed onto the players over this period. And then we can go into that festive uh, part time of the season and really make an impact for this club both in Europe and domestically and hopefully lift a bit of a silverware as well um, come before Christmas so um, yeah another massive game for us ahead of it there has been a bit of team news of course we have had a few injuries recently but Clement has provided an update with regards to a few of those players um, and of course um, we're going to discuss that now quickly <laughs> two seconds um, so yeah basically he stated that obviously Matondo gave us an update on that and said that Matondo will be back after the international break uh, and John Suter and Nico Raskin too so there will be more competition for places going forward so we are going to be without those three going through but that was expected um, and then of course uh, he said he's unsure about Scott Wright for the weekend but we are hopeful for after the break so there another four players probably returning after the international break and under Clement really I'm really excited Excited to see what uh, Rabi Matondo can do because he's almost become a bit of a forgotten man. He was one of the shining lights along with Jack Butland at the start of the season uh, and one of the players that was seriously impressing. There was like a revival of Rabi and as I said, hopefully he can really get or Clement can get the best out of Rabi uh, after the international break because that's what he has a knack for as a manager, developing youth, developing veterans, developing, developing uh, ready-made players and just making them better. That's the testament that he's had uh, since uh, all the clubs he's been at. So it'll be good to see if Rabi can go up that next level because I do think he's a very, very good player for us. Um, having said that, this time last year was not great, but um, yeah, hopefully, as I said, Clement can do things um, and get the best out of him going forward. So yeah, very, very exciting stuff. One last game to go uh, in terms of a score prediction myself. I'm going to go with another 3 0. I'm going to go with a 3 0 win. I would like to see some more goals. And though the way that we're playing currently at the moment, we're always on the attacking foot. When we're 2 0 up against Sparta Prague in the Europa League, we just kept on going and going and going. I want to see that again, um, but against Livingston and win this game comfortably um, and get another three points on the board. And hopefully, Aberdeen can do us a favour. Probably not, but um, it's important that we just keep that gap closed. We do have a game in hand over Celtic, um, so it is more like a five point um, gap rather than an eight point gap. Um, but so Certainly, yeah, uh, really excited. Uh, but Rangers fans, do let me know your thoughts on the topics that we've discussed today. And of course, let me know your score predictions down there in the comment section below for the Livingston game. Um, and then of course, guys, remember, I will be back for the sort of live watch along tomorrow and the live match reaction as well of our last one before the international break. So uh, plenty of content coming up on the channel. As I said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.